Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the part 2 of uh, Big Data Analytics module 3. In the part 1 we had discussed regarding these two topics, we had uh, covered uh, the introduction part and the NoSQL wherein we had one super important question so this was done. Now we will be focusing on the third topic which is uh, NoSQL data architecture patterns. Okay, So we have the following uh, six topics, we will be discussing each one by one. Okay, So the first one is key value store. So before starting, if you like this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Your support helps me make more videos like this. And if you have got any doubt, ping me on Instagram. So let's get started. In the NoSQL, how many things are there? Four things are there. So we are done with this one in the part one. Now we are doing the architecture patterns. So there are totally six architecture patterns. Okay. So uh, we'll be discussing each. The first one is key value store. Okay. This is a super important question from exam point of view. Don't miss this one. Okay. So explain uh, key value store and mention its advantages and limitations. Okay. So uh, key value, what do you understand by the term key value? Key value means there will be a key and associated with that there will be one value. I'll be showing you an example. What it uh, look like uh, looks like is these are the keys, Ashish and Mayur. These are the two keys. And if we type Ashish or uh, Mayur, what we will be getting is the values associated with that. And the values can be of any type. It can be text, image, PDF, audio, video. Okay, it can be any type. Okay. And when we type this one, these keys, we will be getting the corresponding values. This is called as key value pair. The data which is stored in this form is called key value store. Okay, you got the point. There can be many keys and there can be many associated values with that. So that's all. Uh, what is about the key value? Explain key value store. A simple, uh, simple string called key maps to a large data string or blob, basic large uh, object. Key value store access use a primary key for accessing a values. Okay. Now uh, coming to the advantages and disadvantages. For the advantage and disadvantage, you have to remember a story. <coughs> See, key value is the concept, right? Key value. So what uh, comes to your mind when you hear the word key? Obviously the key and the lock will come in your uh, brain, right? Key will be something like this and the lock will be like this. Okay. So this is the key value store. Fine. This is the key and the uh, lock we have. Now you have to imagine a situation where this lock is present outside a home. Okay. So suppose that this is the home and the lock is present in that. Okay. So what does that mean is this home is secured. Okay. Now you have to remember a keyword for the advantages and the disadvantages for both you will be having a keyword which you have to remember. Okay. <clears throat> for the advantages what you have to remember is a secure encrypted home can save robbery property liability successfully. Repeat a secure encrypted home can save robbery property liability successfully. If you remember this switch, uh, the advantage is cake, for, uh, cake work for you. Just remember these keywords. Key value pair, a house which is a secure encrypted home can save robbery property and liability successfully. Okay. So if you remember these keywords, these things is very easy for you. Now let me map those things, whatever I told for the advantages. These are the seven advantages. A is nothing but any type of data. Data store can store any type of data in the value field. As I told you, in the value field, you can have any type of data, image, audio, anything what you want. Okay. Next is A S secure. S for secure, S for single. Query returns a single item. When you fetch a query, it will return just a single item, not all the items with one key. Obviously, why? Because one key is associated with one item only. So that item will only be returned, single item. Then E, encrypted, right? So E is eventually consistent. Key value store, ev even if initially it is unstable, eventually it will become consistent. It will have all the values, means same in all the places. Okay. Then home, H, hierarchical, hierarchical or ordered. The key value store can be hierarchical, like in the hierarchical manner or in ordered manner. Ordered manner means like this like this in a ordered structured manner it can be of two types then after that we had c can see i'll underline the words a s e h c s r p l and s okay so any single eventually hierarchical is done converted return value could be converted to list table column data frame and end columns okay it can be converted and uh, this is the scalability s then um, Robbery, property, liability, reliability, pro uh, portability, and low operational cost. It has these following features. Also, it can be synthetic or auto-generated key. 
okay that was about the advantages let's move on to the disadvantages in limitations we have four limitations what you have to remember is that lock which i told you right see this was the home right the same story you remember for uh, limitations as well so here whatever the lock was present right it is of the useless company okay which company it is useless company so useless and this company makes this instrument so it is called as useless instruments ui okay useless instruments and after that what happened is there was a person who came from national instruments which is a very well recognized us based company when that person came with national instruments it pour acid on the ui which is useless instrument and it got broken and the robbery was done okay so this is the limitations ni acid ui these three keywords you have to remember ni acid and ui ni is nothing but no indexed values will be present no indexed values will be present hence the subset of the values is not searchable okay the subset of the values these are the values the subset will not be searchable if there is no index okay and i is done acid key value does not provide acid properties pretty simple maintaining unique value u for unique and i for individual values maintaining unique value is difficult okay maintaining unique value is difficult when the uh, database increases and large amount of data comes at that time maintaining unique value is difficult queries cannot be performed on individual values okay so just remember that lock story that was about the super important question which is key value store and its advantages and disadvantages let's move to the next one which is the document store the next one is the uh, document store and after that we have a few more concepts which we'll be discussing so what do you understand by the term uh, document document means it can be any of the uh, things like uh, the file documents and the business reports or the folders or some metadata okay all of these uh, consist of the documents so let's have a look what the type of the questions that could be asked in exam under the, under the topic of uh, document um, store so the main thing is uh, there are three types of uh, documents which is csv json and xml formats so we'll be talking about that only uh, document store what it is and uh, what are its features and uh, the two types are there in this one as well which is mongodb and couchdb okay so we'll be discussing on that and ex explain the csv json and xml formats what are the differences and what is its syntax okay and we, we, at which time we should use what okay that we'll be discussing now so um basically document uh, store uh, stores the document types obviously because of its name and the typical users are as follows office documents inventory store forms data document exchange and document search these are its typical users after i've written these two you have to write some of its features some of its features are it uses unstructured data it's similar to object store we'll be learning object store in the upcoming topic it uses nested hierarchies and the querying is easy searches the part in the form of a tree the documents are stored in this form in the form of the tree data structure from the root it starts and the transactions exhibit asset properties okay and there are two uh, compatibilities with uh, the document store couchdb and mongodb the features are mapping json data store multi master application and querying language for couchdb and mongodb has two features rich query language and easier handling of data moving on to the csv json and xml format uh, comma separated values javascript object notation extensible markup language okay so these are the different types i am storing the same information in three types okay so in csv as you can see there are comma separated values the so name roll number is there and the first name is ashish jain and the roll number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Sandeep Joshi and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They are separated by uh, the comma values. This is called a CSV format. Coming to JSON format, you'll have to have a structured syntax. There will be an opening and closing braces. Inside that, you will add the two things. This is under the students. So I'll be adding a students array here. And inside the students array, there are two objects. So I'll be adding two objects within the flower braces. Separated by a comma and the name and roll number will be in the double quotes. Then we have a colon and the values will be present here. This is how you store in the JSON format. Moving on to the XML format, you will be using tags like inside the student tag, there is a small uh, another student tag. The main is students tag. Okay, inside students tag, we have two students. Inside each student, we have a name roll number, name roll number. Starting and ending tag should be specified. Okay, and there were some features and everything, but I will be giving you a hint like uh, whatever advantages, disadvantages you can see from each of these, write for those. Okay, instead of going through all of these features, it will be very confusing. Okay, so hint is like which is more understandable which is more easy the syntax how it is structured with in which parsing is more easier just have a look based on the uh, context you can define for example 
if I want to just um, use it for machine learning this is not uh, applicable for machine learning in a machine learning we'll be using this one comma separated values it's easier to um, separate right and if you are using the parsing to parse the data we can use this one because it's of the form um, curly braces inside that we have the square braces so it's more structured and syntactic form okay that is more organized so we can use JSON in that case so like that you have to write in your own words okay so I have not um, gone into depth in that case next is the tabular data the third one we have is the tabular data what do you understand by the term tabular tabular is first understand it is our table in the in the, in the table what we have the rows and the columns right so in that we have these following things columnar family store big data uh, table rc file format orc and parquet these are the three very important ones okay so listen carefully regarding each of these now in the tabular data it uses uh, the rows and the columns and there are two types of storages okay how many storages are there two types of storage are there for what for uh, memory based uh, row column and memory based column co uh, column okay <coughs> memory row based and memory column based in memory row based what happens is you will be having the column names here and the uh, uh, rows will be present here okay and this uh, address is 1000 1001 1002 and so on then uh, continued from here then continued from here like that it is stored in the memory so it is more easier for OLTP which is online transaction processing if I want to access the uh, person who is having the ID to their information what I can do is fetch 1090 then I'll be able to fetch this whole row isn't it it's easier to access one row whereas in some other case we have the column base in column base what happens this will be stored in uh, column 1 co uh, means uh, address 1 address 2 address 3 address 4 I like that so on address 5 address 6 and so on like that it is stored okay this is column based now this is useful for OLAP which is online analytical processing how it is useful analytical processing means for example if this is the marks of the student now I want to know what is the average marks of all the students obviously I need this whole column I can just fetch this by using one address I'll fetch this whole column in that case I'll be able to analyze it is analyze what it is right so that's all what is the uh, memory column based so in tabular data we have two types which is the memory row based and memory column based now we can have the different types variations in it the first one is the column family store in column family store we'll be able to divide the table into the many divisions also we can group them into different um, groups okay those two things can be done and uh, those things only I have specified here some of the characteristics are given you can go through it <coughs> like I won't repeat these are the same characteristics which I have already discussed you can write it in your own words as well next is about the big data a uh, big table data store big table uh, data store is storing the big data okay what are its characteristics massively scalable integrates easily with Hadoop it is compatible with map reduce and the keys are row column timestamp and attribute if you want to fetch some attribute like time what time this had happened li li uh, like that you can fetch using the timestamp if you want what is the date when it was uh, present or what is the title of it or those things also you can uh, fetch by attribute okay and the million operations are handle large workouts consistent APIs and global available okay those are the things for the big data table if they ask RC format is row co record columnar format RC is the choice when intermediate tables are used it is serializable and the record stores a column in the row group okay the column data is stored in the row group that's the main feature of RC as well as it is intermediate data table which it stores that is about the RC if you use optimized uh, row columnar that is ORC file format it uh, divides the row group into the stripes and each stripe is having a specific MB which is to 56 MB and what it does is it um, has the concurrent needs of the same file so it just stores in a different format which is of the stripes by using the stripes you can have three things that's the next one you have to write indexing and columns and uh, sorry not uh, index uh, see indexing mapping is the first point columns data contains the second point stripe footage is the third point these three things have uh, stripe in this way it is stored in the memory and each has the aggregation function as well okay next we have the parquet file format in parquet file format it is nested this is the main thing you need to remember in the nesting we can nest the row group column group and the chunk pages parquet means the floor covering made of small rectangular wooden uh, blocks okay fitted together in a pattern these are the small blocks fitted together in a pattern so that's what the uh, parquet is so this is how it looks like okay in the memory if you want you can uh, make this uh, diagram in the answer script and that was about uh, the tabular data uh, format okay moving on we have the next which is object and graph store this is super important question from exam point of view so make sure you listen this one 
next we have the uh, object means what it can consist of three things either object can be file document folder images etc or it can be system metadata or custom metadata these three type consist of object if any of these type you have data that is called as object data and it has 11 functions for supporting a apis again the same thing scalability indexing large collections querying language transactions data application schema evolution persistency persistent object life cycle adding modules locking and caching strategy so how many you can remember that many marks you can expect okay next we have the operation object relational mapping explicit question has been asked regarding this so make sure you know this one very well how do you remember this one is first draw html and json xml everything here okay and those things are connected with the java objects so html is converted to java which is further converted to table that's all three steps what are the three steps html json everything will be present here that will be converted to the java objects which will be in turn converted to table that is how you map the html and the uh, json and xml and um, csv all the things to the table okay that is known as object relational mapping make sure practice this diagram very important next we have the graph database in graph what is the main thing nodes and edges okay if you don't know what is nodes and, nodes and edges this is nodes and this is called as edges it is highly flexible and it is interconnected it represents the relationship between nodes what is the relationship between these nodes this is the children node of this one and this is the parent node of this one if you have an, an other, uh, another node here then you can call this as the ancestor of this one okay so those are the things present and if you want the real life time example for example car model sales here we have the car company here we have the times in which the car company was selling and doing the transactions and here is the company names okay like zest sales and hexa sales this is january week one january week two january week three january week four four weeks comprises of a month if you add up all of this you will get yearly sales like that how uh, in this way the graph is stored and in each ad you can see here add operation is there which uh, represents what is the sales made here plus what is the sales made here plus what is the sales made here and so on that will be added up until uh, you get the year data sales of all the weeks that represents the final node like that you can form whatever the business context you have based on that you can make this graph uh, data structure this is mainly used in the big data structures where we have a lot of data and a lot of features and uh, the relationship between the features are present you have to do the analysis purpose at that time you will go with the graph database make sure you don't miss any of the point which i mentioned okay super important from exam point of view coming to the characteristic there are four characteristics use a specialized query language creates a database system in which models has completely different way and the hyper edges are present and a collection of small data size nodes is present here okay that was about the object store and graph database finally we have the <coughs> this one uh, no SQL to manage big data after that uh, we'll be going to the shared nothing architecture then we'll be done with the no SQL part okay if I give you the visualization of where we are actually present at is this much is done the variations of no SQL data patterns just few words I will tell if you want to make a new uh, data means data pattern architecture pattern which is not present here if your context wants that type of data at that time what is the needs of that data for example the data store present here it's not uh, scalable or it's not reliable it's not fast query is not happening for the individual values the index is not working all those needs will be combined and they will be selected and made a new custom data type so uh, for your context it will be applicable that is only the variation of NoSQL since no question has been asked and it's a very basic topic I have not included any points from this one so I hope so you got this point now we'll be moving on to the last uh, two of new uh, NoSQL which is the NoSQL to manage big data here one question is there and shared nothing architecture here i think two or three questions are there so let's uh, discuss that and wrap up this video then in, in the next video i'll discuss mongodb and cassandra which will wind up the module three okay so here's the visual representation we are done with this one and this one now we have left with manage big data and a shared nothing architecture so what do you mean by managing big data if you have big data you want to what manage it right that's only what is called as uh, managed big data pretty simple isn't it now how do you manage the big data listen carefully if you want to want to manage the big data no sql is the best way you can manage the da uh, big data but not all big data can be managed using no sql only a specific uh, domain of big data can be managed by no sql for example this is the whole domain of big data a small uh, part of the big data can be managed by new sql now what is that domain that is the exam uh, type of question that could be asked you have to explain what is the needs present here and how those needs are fulfilled by the no sql for understanding that you need to know what does no sql do so let's go through it one by one till the end first you need to know what does no sql have the features 
which is relevant to the big data okay since you are talking about relevancy if i talk about some stupid features of nosql there is no point uh, of this answering this question right so let's discuss what are the relevant features of nosql which are helpful for big data nosql limits the support of join queries this is the first point there is no join queries there and it characterizes easy creation and high processing speed scalability and storability of much higher magnitude of data big data means what big data right very very big data higher magnitude of data is corresponding with that so i included what this point it sacrifices the support of asset properties the big data does not need asset properties instead it needs the cap properties and base properties so that's the third point and the fourth point is it provides the data processing skills horizontally and vertically big data is not just it will uh, expand horizontally it can expand vertically as well so we'll be adding this point as well of nosql big data solution uh, starts from here these are the features present in nosql and how is it relevant to the big data that we'll be discussing it needs scalable storage of terabytes of data and petabytes of data a large data is needed so that's what the point was uh, measure, um, mentioned here high magnitude of data and here also it scales horizontally and vertically so that is uh, satisfied by this uh, two points dropping support for database uh, joins joins query is satisfied by this point and storing data on different servers and uh, data nodes together as a cluster this uh, is uh, satisfied by here it supports uh, sacrifices support of asset properties which means it's more flexible that means it it accommodates different type of data nodes together and a solution for that is CouchDB, DynamoDB, MongoDB and Cassandra which follow the CAP theorem and it makes the transactions faster and easier the, uh, also the solution must be see CAP is there right the P means partition partitioning tolerant is also a feature which needs uh, to be implemented in the big data so that is satisfied by NoSQL so this is how you need to answer this question to expect full marks Next, we have the characteristics of big data of NoSQL. Again, the same thing, high and easy availability supports to replication, distribute NoSQL sensors, and um, open source tools uh, and support schemaless model, integrated caching, no inflexibility, means flexible, basically. So these are the characteristics, you can go through it once. Next, uh, but the, in exam type of question, this is the question which could be asked, okay explain the how NoSQL manages big data next are the, just the subtopics what are the types of big data problems it needs a scalable and distributed architecture it is open source and it's it is its greatest strength see NoSQL is what open source it is its greatest strength but also it is its greatest weakness now you can ask me how can uh, something be our greatest strength as well as the greatest weakness that is because there are not many standards defined that is why it is its greatest weakness it has no stored procedures GUI made tools are not um, available in the market it sacrifices the asset properties that are some of the types of big data problems okay let's move on to the next uh, topic which is the last one uh, shared nothing architecture for big data tables okay in that we have I guess three questions yeah three questions are there then we will be get done with this one what this is super important okay this is a repeated question what is shared nothing architecture for big data task what are its features even if you don't know what uh, if you have not studied also when by, by the name itself you can understand shared nothing you can write uh, two to three points what is shared nothing shared nothing nothing has been shared okay if this is nothing nothing has been shared among the data nodes nothing has been shared among the data means uh, nodes means what it is selfish data nodes selfish data nodes means what it is partition and it's performing the task parallelly this much if you remember you can easily expect nice marks if this question is asked that is only the shared nothing architecture now what are its four features every node has the relation between the two columns of the table in sn architecture there is no such relation and the data nodes do not share the data with any other node that's the main feature and the big data architecture therefore easily partitions the uh, data into shard shard means selfish nodes okay shard means selfish nodes it will be doing its own task parallelly it will not care what he is doing he will not care what he is doing and he will not care what he is doing that's all what is about the shards very important question from example point of view it turns parallel nodes and coordination process handles the processing sn architecture optimizes massive parallel data processing parallel means what at the same time it's happening that is only what is parallel isn't it so in the same time it's happening that's all what you have to write in the sn architecture features are independent self uh, healing shard and a no network uh, contention at this point of time you need not worry about the features you can write whatever you want if you had listened part one and you are uh, listening till this point okay because you there are many questions what has asked the features and all of them are similar only okay so don't care about the features just get the uh, main concept of what the question is about
Next one, we have the four distribution models in the SNN architecture. Single server mode, I need not explain. Single server means there will be a single server. That's all. Sharding, very large uh, databases means the uh, large database. Sharding is happening. Sharding means what? Database one, database two, database three, database four. It is present in different different servers and uh, parallelly processing. Master slave uh, distribution model. There will be. Uh, I'll be explaining by diagram itself. This is the client. This is the Mongo client, and this is the Mongo server. Every Mongo server is handling the Mongo client and ordering it to do something. and it is doing and giving to the client okay that's all what is the master slave distribution model peer to peer it's like friends there will be peers no one will be master and slave they will be coordinating among each other and they will be doing the stuff okay so for the key points you can go here characteristics i am not going to explain last one we have which is mention some of the ways of handling big data problems what are the big data problems it evenly uh, <coughs> if you want to solve the big data problem of speed evenly distribute data on a cluster using the hash rings so just remember evenly distribute data don't put this much data here and this much data here no that's stupidity so uh, evenly distribute the data use replication to horizontally distribute your replication means what uh, means making the copies and distributing here and there then moving uh, queries to the data not the data to the queries see if you want to buy an ice cream you will go to the shop the shop will not come to you the buying of ice cream is nothing but the query and the data is nothing but the ice cream you are going to the ice cream shop remember like that query distribution to multiple nodes the query is distributed to the multiple nodes then only it will be applicable if it's just distributed to one node the other your friend will be standing there he also wants ice cream if you just um, distribute your query which you want ice cream to one of the ice cream then your friend will become sad right you don't want that so you have to give the query to everyone means buy ice cream for everyone so in this video how many topics we covered this one this one and this one in the next video will be covering mongodb and cassandra db so stay tuned make sure to like button subscribe to my channel for more videos like this i'll see in the part 10 thank you so much for watching